The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Saskatchewan Pulse Growers and BASF. Allison Friesen of BASF joins us here on Real Agriculture. And Allison, we've had a good amount of moisture in parts of Western Canada. And of course, pea and lentil acres are, uh, are up significantly this year. What does this mean in terms of disease implications? So in terms of disease implications, it's going to be one that the pressure is going to be a lot higher because those moisture conditions are there. Uh, also, guys got in really early, especially in this region in southern Saskatchewan. They were in second last week of April. Uh, most of the pulses were in before the second week of May. Uh, so we have really good stands established early, but that means we're also going to get canopy closure a lot earlier as well, uh, which can be a concern if uh, a grower does have that canopy closure early. It forms a bit of a micro environment environment for those diseases so you want to make sure that you're scouting your crops early and making sure you're coming in with a fungicide before um, first flower if you do see those disease uh, symptoms occurring or if you do have favorable environments for it otherwise first flower is probably when you should really be going at it if you do, don't have those concerns early on. Maybe take us through uh, the common diseases and, and timings when, uh, when we should be looking for them. So in peas, microsporella is definitely one of your largest concerns. It's pretty much in every pea field in Saskatchewan and even probably in some of those heavy soil zones that are trying it out in Manitoba, you will also see a lot of concern. It's a really important one to get on early because it does start from the bottom up of the plant. So that can affect how much green tissue you have, which ultimately affects your yield. But it also affects you in the long term via stand. So how harvestable are those plants because if they have a weakened stem or are infected, it can cause the plants to fall over a lot easier as well. So it's important to go and check for the, that symptomology on the lower canopy as well. So microsporella and Ascochyta are actually the same disease, but they have different reproduction systems. So one's is sexual and one's asexual. So you want to look for a chemistry that actually has activity in, at least on one because it will have some activity on the other. Other ones in lentils, it's really important to be on top of things like anthracnose as well as ascochyta blight, both also early season. A lot of them can be seed borne, so it's important that growers did use healthy seed and hopefully a majority of them did but you can still see those uh, inoculums in the fields. We have a lot of guys going pulse on pulse this year uh, just because prices are so good and the market was there. So it's really important that they're checking how, what their disease inoculum levels are and watching it progress up the plant. And Thracnose can be quite devastating if conditions are actually conducive. It's one that infects not only the leaves but also the stem, which can cause you to lose actually a lot of branches on the plant as well. And it causes a significant pitting on the stem as well, which we can see in some of these demonstrations. Uh, so it's, it's very easy to identify, but a very small, but can move very quickly through plant contact as well as rain splash. So it's important to take care of. Um, Ascochyte is a big one uh, that we've seen lately in lentils as well. Uh, it is one that can affect uh, a lot of your leaf tissue and it defoliates the plant on the lower area quite quickly, which really robs you of a lot of that yield. Because lentils are indeterminate and continuously flower, you want to keep that biomass nice and lush at the bottom so it can continue to, to put out pods and increase your yields as well. Okay, we're also seeing some root rot issues. Is there anything that can be done about that? So root rot's one that because guys are tightening their rotations and going pulse on pulse, we're seeing it become a lot more common. Uh, root rots right now, there isn't anything that fully controls root rot on the market. Uh, so it's really important that you are utilizing a seed treatment uh, initially, just so you can get control of some of those uh, soil borne fusariums, even Rhizoctonia is starting to move in, as well as Pythium. Ensure Pulse is a great product for that, just to get your plants off to a good start and a good healthy start. There's a lot of root rots like Aphanomyces and even Fusarium root rot that have moved into the areas. And last year we didn't see as much symptomology because it was a lot drier, but we've had a lot of rain and a lot of peas sitting in wet uh, ground. And first off, peas don't like wet feet. They will start to yellow even just without disease. So when you add in those wet feet plus that disease, root rot can be quite damaging. And because there is no control of it from a seed treatment aspect right now, it can be quite difficult to manage because right when you come in at that herbicide timing is when most growers actually notice it. And even coming over with a foliar spray, if you still have somewhat of a healthy root system, it can help. So coming in early with a preaxer or something like that. But if you have a root system that's completely girdled off, it's, it's a, at that point where if conditions don't dry up, you might start to lose crop. 
And that's where they have to make that decision of how much more money are you going to put in it to protect it with the foliar fungicide or if that crop's even actually going to make it to yield. And it's quite devastating overall and you can see the symptomology across many different areas but we really need to extend our rotations and make sure we're being proactive with disease management from both the seed treatment and the fungicide applications.